Preston Leinbach and Zane Klofelter for Otters TV. It's been a while since we've been able to talk to you guys, but uh, we thought, you know, 2020 has been such a good year where a lot of things have been unknown. We're heading to 2021. We thought we'd give you guys a little bit of an update, even though it's been a, an extended off season for this year, but the give you an update on the normal off season time period here in the fall. Good. So the extended off season just wasn't me. It was everybody, <laughs> right? Right. I'm just exactly, making sure. Yes. Making sure. Yeah. Uh, it would be weird that. Hopefully, by the time we play baseball again in 2021, it'll be been two years have gone by without baseball here at Bossy Field and for the Evans Otters. And uh, to me, I, I just can't wrap my head around it yet. It's still chomping at the bit for 2021 baseball. So fingers crossed. Let's do it. Stay safe, and we can make it happen. Right? We can make we, it happen. We can make it happen. We're getting closer. I, I have uh, more budding confidence as we go along here with the situation regarding the COVID pandemic, but. As I mentioned, we wanted to give you an update on kind of some of the things that have been happening this offseason. Uh, first, just kind of a recap here locally for the Evans Otters. Of course, during the summer months, going back into the spring, uh, the new upgrades and renovations here to Bossy Field that we still can't wait to show off to you guys. But if you want to see them before the gates open for an Otters baseball game, Otters TV has you covered with that tour as well. That's right. That's right. We were lucky enough to host kind of a few non-baseball events early on in the fall before things kind of Starting going back in the right I even direction. got to MC a wedding, Preston. You did. So I actually had one announcing gig at the ballpark this year. Actually, <laughs> two, a UE baseball game. So <laughs> go figure. <laughs> so, you know, so we did have those events. Uh, so those people who came out got to see some of the new renovations and upgrades here at the ballpark as well. And uh, it's, it, we just can't wait to show it off because we got new lighting, the new video board, and uh, just kind of a new way of doing things here at the ballpark. I have new hair and a new beard, too. So, I mean, just the improvements keep on coming. I had a pandemic beard going on. I had to trim it, though. But the last – and then plus, the thing that kind of filled our time a little bit this summer was the virtual broadcast that, that we did. That was so much fun. That was so much fun. We did, what, three of them? We did three virtual broadcasts. The first one was in celebration of Boston Bill's 105th anniversary. And then just for fun, we decided to do a couple more throughout the summer. And we had a lot of interviews, which all of them are archived and uploaded to our YouTube channel. So you can go back and watch those interviews. We talked to players, some of the coaching staff, local media personalities, others in the baseball world and professional sports world as well. Uh, so many guests that joined us this year. Now, we each talked to about, you know, 50-50. So who was your favorite interview guest over the three virtual games that we did together? Oh, putting me on the spot here. That's what I love oh. to do. Yeah, so he let, he let it off. Oh. I'm here for the curveballs. Let's see. I mean, I, I, I mean, I think it was kind of fascinating to listen to some of our former players. Uh, we, I had a chance to catch up with Denver Stuckey, Jeff Lystra, uh, some of the early, going back to the early 2000s, late 90s Otters. And, and here's some of their stories about, one, how they were you know, discovered, you know, scouted and signed with the Otters, as well as their uh, time playing with the Otters. For Jeff Lystra, he got to play for Boots Day when he was the inaugural manager in Evansville. Denver Stuckey played for Greg Jelks. And just kind of hearing their stories for a lot of stuff, for me, I was still a little tight when, right. <laughs> during that right. era. So. Right. Man, for me, that's a really good question. Can I pick two? Sure. I will say Andrew Warner because it is fascinating yeah. hearing his perspective as being one of only two Evansville Otters players to actually make it to Major League Baseball on the show, obviously pitching for the San Diego Padres in 2012, less than two years after he last dressed for the Evansville Otters here at the ballpark. So that was a really cool thing. And then Josh Allen, and I say Josh Allen because you see him at the <laughs> ballpark every day for – you know, so many years, and he hasn't been in Evansville for a couple of seasons, doing great things the last couple of years with St. Paul. But then to hear how much he still respects, appreciates, and misses Evansville, it shows you how much of an impact that this city and community really has on players. And he's a Florida guy, so I'm sure he's talking, he says he tells his friends all the time how much he misses Evansville. I'm sure people down in Florida probably think he's crazy, but you have to come and experience this community to believe it. That's exactly right. I'm surprised for you didn't pick Tyler Vilks, or that you, you know, him, you and him go back and forth with Michigan IU football. And this year you got the upper hand. Yeah, you know what? Indiana beats Michigan in football <laughs> for the first time since 1987. Indiana was the better ranked team that Saturday. They were 13th. Michigan mm -hmm. was 23rd. I am a little disappointed. I hope Tyler Vale is watching this. I thought for certain, because I heard from him. Was, wasn't he wearing his shirt? He was. And then he has talked some smack and has sent me some text messages, too, in the past when Michigan has won and Indiana won. I was waiting for the congratulations. I never got it. So come on, Tyler. I'm still waiting for the Indiana's better than Michigan. Clearly, top 12 in the polls. 
So yeah, we they had all those virtual broadcasts and like I said, all those interview guests and just kind of going back and looking, watching them a lot of baseball from last season, 2019. Of course, all of our ODN games uh, from last couple seasons are also archived on our YouTube channel as well. That's kind of how we wrapped up. Then we kind of quieted down for a little bit. And then going into October and in the fall months, a lot of news coming out of the Frontier League. First, we'll start out the newly announced partnership with Major League Baseball. A lot of the, uh, ma the three major independent leagues have announced a similar partnership, the Atlantic League, American Association, as well as the Frontier League, uh, getting to, uh, quote, unquote, be a partner with Major League Baseball. Yeah, as a partner league, there's still a lot of unknowns with that. I know a couple of things on the tails with charity outreach and outreach with the game of baseball here in the Evansville community and in surrounding counties. I know that's going to be a big part of it too, but it's interesting to see as the affiliated MILB um, contracts, how that being a partner league will benefit the Evansville Otters and the Frontier League as a whole, because you might get better players, as Jeff Gardner mentioned in one of our interviews during the virtual game. You might get more facilities at the expense from Major League Baseball so they can see some of the talent that we have in terms of scouting too. That's right. And and like you said, there's still a lot to be developed and defined in those terms uh, with that partnership with Major League Baseball. But uh, even since the beginning, I mean, the purpose of the independent leagues and for the Frontier League has been to serve the markets not served right. by Major League Baseball or Minor League Baseball. And you kind of hit the, the nail on the head. The big part, thing about this partnership is, uh, I guess you say, kind of the marketing aspects and, and more importantly, the community engagement uh, with some of the Major League Baseball programs that they've established over years throughout communities, and hopefully that we can kind of carry on through our community as well. Right, and one thing I do want to point out too, there's another independent league. Because of MILB getting smaller, the Pioneer League, which is based out west, Montana, and that area, the Pioneer League used to be single A, now they're an independent uh, professional league as well. So it's going to be interesting in my mind because the Otters historically – with Max Peterson being a West Coast mm -hmm. guy, they've always been able to sign and get players from the West Coast. I'm kind of interested to see how the Pioneer League and their addition as a similar league as the Frontier League, if that takes any of those potential athletes that might have ended up in the Midwest, if that keeps them out on the West Coast. And when, again, with the, kind of the reshuffle of the minor league baseball landscape uh, in recent weeks, some of the news has been a few of the Atlantic League teams have moved on up to uh, affiliated baseball levels and, and forming partnerships with MLB organizations, uh, as well as one in, in recent weeks with the American Association, St. Paul, becoming affiliated, of course, to their neighbor, Minnesota Twins. Well, yeah, and that's, I mean, that's, that's as, <laughs> as convenient as you can get, right? So just right across the river, it's really interesting in my mind to see all of this play out. And it's good that MLB is re rewarding some of these independent franchises that have really done the work to get to this point. But in the same breath, I do have to say, I feel bad for a lot of the communities that for 50, 60 years had affiliated baseball, a lot of them with the same farm parent club. And now all of a sudden they don't have that, you know, atmosphere, that environment anymore. Right. So there's always, it's a double-edged sword it's, for the communities. It's, it's positive for some, negative for others. Uh, and with St. Paul, that, that's been a team that Evansville's kind of had a good partnership with. A lot of former artists have gone on to play for St. Paul, like Josh Allen. Right, so that well. dynamic is no longer there. That's right. And uh, in, in the Atlantic League, Somerset. Somerset. Right, yes. A lot of former artists have gone on to Somerset. That's, and then that's, come back, it's like, yeah, no, it's. So, Somewhere there's a train that goes directly to Somerset and back to Evansville. Yeah. I've yet to find so, it. So, again, with the, the changes in minor league baseball, the dominoes, I guess you say, are starting to fall. Uh, when, as you said, the talent pool may uh, help the independent teams like the Evansville Otters going forward as well. And speaking of more Frontier League news this offseason, in case you missed it, the Frontier League announced another expansion. Last year, the, it was the big expansion with the uh, joining the Can-Am League together with the Frontier League. Two teams in Canada. Now you can make it three as Ottawa has now joined the Frontier League. And just recently, they've announced their brand and their team name and they're revealed their logo. They are going to be the Ottawa Titans. See, I thought they would go for like a mascot that starts with an O. Mm -hmm. Like, get that alliteration. Yeah, the alliterate man. Like, I feel like, you know, Evansville hockey a couple of years mm -hmm. ago, they were asking for what the new name was going to be for the right. SPHL team. Like, the Evansville Edge sounded great to me, but I didn't have the money to. <laughs> you know, buy the team and name them. But, yeah, I like the name, and the, the mascot is kind of cool. It has that minor league feel to it uh, and the colors. Right. The colors are going to be basically uh, red and black and white, for, for what I can tell through, from their logo so far, uh, similar to the old Florence Freedom color scheme. Then now, of course, Florence is now Florence Y'all's. 
I honestly forgot about that. But then again, it's been a really long it's year. Been it's been a really, really long, long year. year. Uh, and as we go forward, some of the uh, more Frontier League news, again, the, with the expansion of the 15 teams now, uh, we're still waiting to see a, you know, a draft or, you know, even, even uh, hopefully cross fingers, finalized 2021 schedule as uh, I think the biggest thing for the scheduling committee for the Frontier League is maybe leaving – some bubble space for makeup games, which we've seen a lot of sports have to deal with here in recent in recent months. A couple of things about the schedule, you know, in a normal year, typically the rough draft of that schedule is starting to be put together in the month of August. I know people are thinking, wow, that's crazy early, but yeah, you have to, there's a lot of planning, a lot of contingencies in place. I know that there is no schedule right now because I think the league is still waiting for any other developments from the MILB situation. Plus, we had kind of hinted in our virtual broadcast that expansion is still an open case because you mentioned mm -hmm. there's 15 teams in the Frontier League. Are you still only going to have two divisions? Because if you do, that's an odd number. Now, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, the Frontier League was split into three divisions. So if you have only 15 teams for 2021 and assuming everyone's able to play with no restrictions, are you going to break it down into three divisions of five, and then how would that change the playoff landscape? I think that's all really intriguing as we kind of move ahead. You're exactly right. And then plus, there's still to be considered, there's different regulations among each of the different states with teams involved. Uh, and border course, travel. Of course, the border yeah. travel to <laughs> our Canadian friends as well. So there's still a lot you know, being taken in by the Frontier League and the board as well. And speaking of the Frontier League board, to the Ems Lawyers, recently, Otters President John Steely. He named the board president for the Frontier League, and it's a, a big step up for him. He'll still have his uh, responsibilities here with the Otters, but he'll also uh, be leading kind of that committee as well. And, and the Otters will have obviously, uh, I guess, a good uh, hearsay from John Stanley representing them in, in, on the league board and, and hopefully pushing along the development of that partnership with Major League Baseball, part, uh, the marketing opportunities for the Frontier League, and, uh, and who knows what kind of opportunities it could lead to beyond even 2021. And opportunities for me, I can now brag to my friends and tell them I know a president. <laughs> right? So, it is, it, congratulations to John in all sincerity. I mean, he, he's done amazing things since he's gotten here. Obviously, his previous time uh, when I first met him, when I did public address work and still do public address work for the University of Evansville, John was a great guy. And so he's perfect for that role. So that's kind of the gist of what's happened so far during the fall, with early winter months here of the off season. Again, we missed all of our fans uh, this year that didn't get to come out and enjoy baseball, just like we didn't get to work base the baseball games this year. We definitely missed. We can't wait for uh, again, fingers crossed, 2021 season. And even though again the schedule, ticket information, all that's kind of been delayed for the most part because. You know, the situation is still a little bit unknown. We do hope to have that for you as we go into the new year in 2021. Uh, so that way you all can kind of get excited just like we can for a baseball season once being a bossy field. But uh, there's been a lot of news otherwise. And uh, just we keep, we keep having that hope and that excitement. And hopefully we'll get to uh, kind of celebrate together when we have that opening day. And just know Preston and I will be chilling here with Marv Bates until first pitch <laughs> opening day 2020. Not leaving the spot. <laughs> we're not, we're not going to leave. We're just going to stay here like through the months waiting for Otters baseball. So I'm ready. I know all of you guys are too. And I know we all look forward to seeing all of our fans here at the beautiful ballpark really soon. Yeah. We thank you all for tuning into this. Otters TV off-season update. We can't wait to see you all again in person soon at the ballpark. That's St. Claude Felter. I'm Preston Leinbach. This has been Otters TV.